a very good morning students today we are going to discuss about the control hardware for temperature of living stream through the heat exchanger so already we discussed a various component of the control system today we are going to discuss few more component of the control system where we are going to introduce a transducer and converter so in this system the control system required to control the temperature of liquid stream leaving the heat exchanger which is shown into the figure it consists of the following components it consists transducer which converts temperature signal to the current signal controller which converts current signal to the current signal converter which converts current signal to pressure signal control all which converts pressure signal to the flow rate of the fluid so we are going to control the temperature of living stream from the heat exchanger so how to maintain the temperature of the process stream leaving the heat exchanger is described in this control system so how this system how works in this system temperature of living stream from the heat exchanger is measured with help of the thermocouple and these signals from the thermocouple is sent to the transducer which produces an output in the range of 4 to 20 milliampere so whatever the temperature measured by thermocouple this temperature signal is converted into the range of 4 to 20 milliampere means if we take a range of temperature 0 to 100 degree celsius then 0 means 4 milliampere and 100 degree celsius means 20 ampere so if the temperature is in between mm -hmm. accordingly that much amount of current signals are generated which is a linear function of input the output of the transducer enters the controller which is compared to the set point to produce an error signal the controller converts this error to an output in the range of 4 to 20 milliampere according to the required value output of the controller enters the converter which produces an output in the range of 3 to 15 psi which is again the linear function of the input finally the output of the converter is sent to the top of the control wall so this is air to open control wall where the flow from cooling water to the heat exchanger is taken place so this is a diagram for controlling system of the heat exchanger thermocouple measures send signal to the transducer transducer converts this temperature signal to the current signals sent to the controller controller converts into the error in form of again a electric signals this electric signals are goes from converter to the controller this signals get converted into the pressure and in air to open control wall this pressure signal is get converted into the flow so how much amount of water to be flow through the cell side of the heat exchanger is decided by the whole control system and accordingly the temperature of outlet stream is controlled now consider how this process will be carried out so consider initially the process is at steady state the outlet temperature is equal to the set point if the temperature of hot process stream increased now if this process stream temperature increased then what sequence will occur the outlet temperature produce an proportional change in a signal to the controller as soon as the controller measures this rise in the temperature relative to the set point the controller output increases according to a proportional action because this is a proportional controller 
द इनक्रीज इन सिग्नल टू द कन्वर्टर कॉजेस द आउटपुट प्रेशर फ्रॉम कन्वर्टर टू इनक्रीज द ओपन द वॉल वाइडर इन ऑर्डर टू इनक्रीज द कूलिंग फ्लो रेट इनक्रीज फ्लो ऑफ कूलिंग वाटर विल रिड्यूसेस द प्रोसेस स्ट्रीम आउटलेट टेम्परेचर एंड विल अप्रोच टू द डिजायर टेम्परेचर सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैन कंट्रोल द टेम्परेचर ऑफ आउटलेट स्ट्रीम ऑफ द हीट एक्सचेंजर दिस different component of control system now can be applied to the any process from the chemical industries now very important to know about the control system is a controllers which is a very important part of the any control system so we will discuss about the controllers what are their types their transfer functions and its application in a chemical industries the various controllers are used in process control to convert the error generated in the range of 4 to 20 milliampere again to the current signal in the range of 4 to 20 milliampere and send it to the converter converter converts this current signal to the pressure signal and given it to the pneumatic controller various types of the controllers used in chemical process industries are on off controller proportional controller proportional integral controller proportional derivative controller and pid controllers we'll discuss these controllers one by one on off controller on off controller is a special kind of the proportional controller it works only between a two extreme conditions in case of control all it works either fully open or fully closed this is very simple one the bandwidth of on off controller is nearly equal to zero so there is no bandwidth whereas proportional controller in proportional controller output signal is directly proportional to the error obviously so we can write p of t is proportional to epsilon t so we can take its laplace laplace will be p of s by epsilon of s is equal to kc so this kc will be called as a steady state gain or is called as a strain sensitivity and this is the transfer function for proportional controller which can be shown through the block diagram as it is epsilon of s kc and p of s so p of s by epsilon of s is equal to kc now if the integral action is added to the proportional it becomes proportional integral controller so both actions are added you can see proportional action where p of t is proportional to epsilon of t and integral action is p of t is proportional to the integration of epsilon of t so you can combine together and you can find out its laplace transform so this is the way you can find out the laplace transform for the proportional con integral controller it will be p of s by epsilon of s is equal to kc into 1 plus 1 by tau y s where this tau y is called as a integral time so earlier was nothing but only kc now tau y is introduced here so there are two parameters added tau y is integral time and kc is a steady state gain so this will be the block diagram for pi controller the third fourth type is proportional derivative controller in this proportional the derivative action is added as shown in the expressions p of t is proportional to epsilon of t and p of t is proportional to the derivative action of d by of epsilon of t by dt so you can combine these two actions together and you can find out its laplace its laplace will be p of s by epsilon of s is equal to kc into 1 plus tau ds where one more term that added is called as a derivative time so this is how this is a block diagram for the pd controller epsilon of s kc into 1 plus tau ds and right side will be p of s now the last type will be a proportional integral derivative type of the controller 
so in this along with the proportional action the integral and derivative action is also added to the controllers so these are the three actions shown you can combine these three actions and you can find out its laplace the laplace will be p of s by epsilon of s is equal to kc into bracket 1 plus 1 upon tau y s plus tau d s so you can see the first term will be for proportional action the second will be for integral and the third term indicates a derivative action so this is how you can find out the transfer function for the most important controller that is PID controller this will be a block diagram for the controllers so the comparison between these controllers is shown in this figure so this is how nothing but the control variable changes with respect to the time whenever there is no control the first curve the control variable continues to rise to the new steady state so what happened in this case that system reached to the new steady state and remains same which is not desirable so we are going to add a different types of the controllers initially proportional controller because of this the system is able to restrict the rise of control variable and that is very important and bring it to the rest but again the new steady state is reached you can see curve 2 the difference between the new steady state value and the initial value is called as a offset so it is shown here that proportional controller gives some offset Generally, this offset is seen to be a 22% of its ultimate change. In case of PI controller, the addition of integral action eliminates the offset. You can see curve 3. So, the offset is eliminated, but the disadvantage of proportional integral controller is the response become more oscillatory in nature. You can see. In PD controller, okay. Uh, they also provide the same offset like a proportional controller you can see curve 4 okay but the oscillations are decreased so this response is non oscillatory so the last action is PID controller in this because of addition of integral and derivative action to the proportional action it improves the response the rise of this control variable is restricted more quickly you can see the graph 5 and it rapidly returns to the initial value with less or no oscillations and because of this reason only the PID controllers are widely used in the industries so now if you want to select which controller is suitable for your system you can consider the following parameters if the offset of 22% is tolerable, you can use proportional controller. But if no offset is tolerable, but oscillations can be tolerable, you can go for PI controller. If offset is tolerable, but the oscillatory behavior is not desirable, you can go for PD controllers. And if you want everything to be in the limit, then PID controllers are widely used because of its fast response. So this is how nothing but various types of the controllers can be studied and is used in the industries. So at the end we will discuss about the application of the controllers. These controllers are widely used in a chemical process industries and allied industries for controlling the various parameters. Proportional controllers can be used effectively for the control of liquid level systems. Proportional integral controller can be used for control of vapor pressure and flow rates in which undesirable offset is eliminated and accepted speed response is maintained. Proportional integral controller can also be used to control the temperature of the process conditions whenever offset elimination is essential pd controller can be used for gas pressure control system in which less oscillatory response is desirable pid controllers can be used for control of temperature 
and composition in which offset elimination is essential conditions and the faster response is desirable. Thus, a PID controllers are widely used in industrial processes due to offset elimination and a non-oscillatory behavior. So this is how various types of the controllers are used in a chemical industries as per the requirements. In all these controllers, PID controllers are widely used because of less offset, less oscillation and provides a quick response to the system. So this is how we can study the controllers with help of their transfer function, characteristics and applications. In next lecture, we will discuss about the chemical reactor control system.